questions. First, I want to thank the uh, Secretary for coming out to Southern California and to Aliso Canyon. Not that it's hard to come out to Southern California, but I appreciate him coming out and having the hearing. And uh, it was one of the uh, biggest incidents of the year, without a doubt. And uh, so my first, all of my questions will be around Aliso Canyon and around the, the gas leak that, uh, that plagued our district for 118 days and continues to have uh, serious issues. Can you tell me what uh, the connection is to the states? Um, in certain states we have, like in California, we have the CPUC. We obviously have the governor's office that does an awful lot of these types of of uh, regulations and issues, and then we have CARB, and uh, I could go on and on, and I'm sure everyone's state could go on and on. So can you tell me from the DOE what their connection is, what their stance is um, on uh, connecting with the states and reducing and the regulations that come out of the states? Okay. Well, uh, thank you for the question. So uh, we're, the, we're the technical organization. You know, we do research and development. We've got a tremendous... Uh, resource with the network of national lab laboratories, you know, thousands and thousands of researchers, uh, researchers and scientists and engineers uh, that cover the, the gamut of, of, of scientific knowledge, much of which is, is relevant to challenges like this. Uh, so our, our primary role at the Department of Energy, we're, we're not the regulators. Uh, you know, we're, yeah. that's, that's, that's not our job. Um, however, we, we do have a, a very deep scientific bench uh, that is really relevant to state uh, and local and federal authorities when it comes to understanding risks, um, understanding how to mitigate risks, uh, quantifying concerns, uh, helping local and state entities come up with plans for, for mitigating those risks. Uh, we think we're an important resource. And indeed, much of the research and development that we do is geared towards quantifying concerns that the communities have around the long-term safety and sustainability of our fossil energy systems. Uh, we think that's an important mission that we have and, and one that we, we, we look for opportunities to work with state authorities. And, and absolutely, I understand uh, the regulatory um, issues and, and who is in charge of what, but right. can you tell me that, um, in other words, if, if it wasn't an emergency, would you be reaching out to some of these states to do some of these areas that have these types of issues that do uh, high energy output that do underground piping that do these types of things that uh, that can be dangerous um, and we've been doing them for 70 or 80 years uh, and we've learned an awful lot are you reaching out to those groups and and giving them your expertise and maybe working on some of those issues so that they when they do regulations they're effective regulations and they're uh, uh, the industry is able to continue on with the regulation? Um, ending, Congressman, I mean, we have uh, numerous interactions with, uh, say, from everything from the Southern State Energy, uh, uh, Southern State Energy Board to the American Association of Petroleum Geologists. Um, we have uh, ongoing conversations with state geologists throughout the, uh, throughout the United States. I mean, there's, there's myriad entities that we work with to, and, and it goes, to, it, it, that, that communication goes two ways. I mean, we get great inputs from states in terms of things that they're le learning and, and their processes which helps us shape our research and development program. And then we also look for opportunities to share things that we're learning so that, uh, so that states can be uh, more effective regulators. Uh, states, of course, again, we're, we're not the regulators. States are, 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 are covetous of their regulatory autonomy, which I think is, is important. Right. But at the same time, um, every state has, well, states have different concerns, but a lot of them are, are similar. And a lot of the things that states are concerned with are the very issues that we are investigating with the Office of Foster Energy, with the National Energy Technology Laboratory. Uh, so indeed, I, 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 look for, uh, I, I look forward to having further opportunities to collaborate with the state of, uh, state of California and with other entities throughout the, uh, the United States on, on these important issues. And, and very quickly, so we've seen the, the Pipes Act that has moved through for underground piping. And there's been an amendment that has been kind of to put a regulation across the board in the federal government so that states are not doing, one's doing um, this, one state's doing this, one state's doing this. How would you feel as, um, is that a good, is that a good uh, line in the sand to say that the federal government should be doing that? Or should we allow the states to just uh, do whatever you want and there is no federal regulation? 
Well, uh, Congressman, I, 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 I'm not familiar enough with the amendment to speak specifically to, to that particular amendment or, or to that, that piece of proposal of legislation. Um, but certainly there is, there is a, a balance to be, to be drawn. And again, we're, we're, we're not the regulator, uh, but you know, whatever entity is in charge of putting in place uh, rules or promulgating those rules, uh, the Department of Energy would, would look for opportunities to, to collaborate to make sure that rules that are put in place represent common sense regulation that's consistent with the science and the quantified risk that we've, uh, um, that we've worked on. Very good. Thank you very much. And I'll recognize the distinguished gentleman from Colorado.